As if someone had heard my screams, I suddenly felt the hands let go and disappear, leaving me to float in the darkness they left me in. I shut my eyes. Please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream. I finally felt a surface under my feet and I collapsed onto it, my body curling in on itself from the experience I had. I didn't dare tear my eyes away from my lap, not ready to get up just yet. The voice I heard, however, made my heart stop. You! What are you doing here? Finally, I can skip again. After all of that, I'm gonna cry. It was quite traumatizing with the chain around my neck and collars and things. Alright, let's skip ahead a little bit because I've seen this before now. Do, 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 do. I'll ask about the girl. How's she doing? She gonna be okay? No, Sarah's gonna take care of her. How are you? <laughs> I'm checking on her because I'm going to be training with Sarah this time around. So, I thought we'll do that. And I'll, I'll watch them do their thing. Might as well make another left. Turn left once more and headed down the hall, greeted by more fantastical decor. The sound of a heated battle caught my attention. I quickly rushed over to see a door barely open a crack, and behind it echoed the sound of clashing swords. <laughs> oh, you two goobers. I'm so excited to finally get you two together, I hope, and don't you dare die on me. I peeked in to see Diana and the guard that was with her before in an intense sword fight. Now that I could take a closer look, the man was extremely handsome and looked human, yet I could sense that he was very much a demon just from his presence alone. The man had the upper hand, but it was easy to tell that he was holding back slightly by letting Diana swing her sword again and again at him before attacking her and forcing her to defend. The look on Diana's face showed pure concentration and almost anger as her sword flashed with his. I had never seen Diana this intense before, so to see stress and determination written across her expression was a surprise. Why was she fighting with a sword, though? She had demon magic. You're and holding back! back. Enough! Enough! Diana jumped back from the man, bringing her sword to her side as the man did the same in perfect sync. She growled before tossing the weapon to him, and he caught it by the hilt with ease. I told you not to hold back. Didn't you hear me? The man stared at Diana before gently bringing the swords together and making them vanish into a soft black mist. He began to walk towards her as she turned around and crossed her arms. You can't treat me as if you are training a child, Sarah. I need to be ready for whatever the demon lord throws my way, and you holding back is only a hindrance to me. I apologize, my lady. Empty words. It clicked. They were training. This man was her trainer, and she was being treated like a novice. Why? Also, he did apologize. Why was she being so harsh about it? Maybe it was a mistake. Diana let out a sigh and walked to the balcony of the room, laying her hands on the railing and leaning over her arms. As each day goes by, my kingdom, my army, and I are constantly at risk. If I cannot defend myself when my energy runs out, then how will I defend this kingdom? You will be victorious. I will be slaughtered because of your inability to train me properly. You know why I cannot, and yet you still demand it of me. I cannot bring myself to even potentially harm you. And that will lead to my death. What? What was Sarah talking about? Why couldn't he train her properly? Why was she so peeved about it? Couldn't she just get another trainer? You will not die, my lady. I promise you that. I cannot trust anyone who says that to me. But you know that it's true. I will repeat my promise over and over to you until you accept it. That promise comes out of a lie. I watched as Sarah walked over to Diana and gently wrapped his arms around her from behind. She didn't resist, but she didn't lean into the embrace either. My love for you is not a lie, Azair. You do not have permission to use my name. You are avoiding the subject. My feelings for you are real. Your feelings are false. They are as pure and true as your golden heart. Oh. I could not believe what I was seeing. Diana had an admirer? When did this become a thing? Who even was this guy to her? Why was she so against him and his love? You will defeat the Demon Lord and bring freedom to the Abyssal Plains. 
You will rise and become the land's new queen and sovereign, and I will stand beside you forevermore, because I love you. <sighs> Deny my love all you may. I have served you and your family my entire life. I could never lie or hurt you. If you truly cannot love me back, then I will remain as your humble protector and servant till the end of my days. Don't worry, Sarah. I got your back this time. You waste your life on me. It is not a waste to serve and protect the woman I love with my life. You waste your love on me. It's not a waste to love such a wonderful woman. I didn't know what to make of this. Sarah really seemed dedicated to Diana, yet she was putting up some sort of emotional wall between them that he couldn't break through. It was sad to watch, yet from the posture Diana held, I could tell that she felt her actions were justified. Maybe she was trying to protect him from her. Maybe she didn't want to hurt him. I had seen firsthand what she could do if you had something she needed. This must be how she acted when something needed her. And there it is. Diana gently sighed. To his and my surprise, Diana turned her body slightly to Sarrow in his arms and ran her hand over Sarrow's chest, making his uniform top vanish into purple mist and leaving his chest bare. What was Diana doing? I need energy. From me, or do you wish me to- Just give me your energy. I have no time to wait for you to get me a sweet flower. <laughs> you can be her sweet flower, Sarrow. Sarrow nodded before gently turning Diana fully to him in his arms and kissing her. For some reason, it may have looked like a normal kiss, but I could feel the love and passion that ran through it. It was almost magical to watch. One thing was for certain, however. He really did love her. The way he held her painted his feelings like a picture, so openly gentle and loving. Did she love him, though? She simply had one hand holding one of his arms while another rested against Sarah's back. Diana's feelings were an enigma. I quickly took that moment to leave, not wanting to disturb them and not wanting to see their moment go any farther than that kiss. Sounds good. Time to skip ahead again. We're not eating imp. No more. Not doing it again. <laughs> now that I know. Thank you, Faye. Alright. Alright. Here they come. In reply, Diana summoned what looked like a saber and placed it in front of us. Ready yourselves! It could be the demon lord! The other demons in the room readied themselves and stared at the tear, either holding a weapon or preparing a spell. I felt the air change, becoming heavier as the tear began to grow. The energy around it began to pulsate, making everyone in the room that much more tense. I stared at the tear as well, frightened as to what was coming. Was it the demon lord? His minions? My mind began to cycle through fearful ideas of what was about to appear. Ah! <laughs> and they're here. My heart almost stopped. Fallen from the tear and landing on the table were the five Incubi brothers. They were piled on top of one another, having come through one at a time. However, as the last brother landed, the boys fell to one side, toppling off of the table and landing on the floor. The rebels around me stared at the fallen pile of Incubi, confused and surprised. As the tear in the air closed, the ogre man was the first to lower his sword. What the hell? Who are they? Careful! They could be the Demon Lord's men! No! The rebels looked to me as I stood up, Diana following and still protecting me, and I stared at the boys on the ground. They all looked dazed and a bit shell-shocked from having fallen twice in rapid succession. I almost couldn't believe it. There they were, right in front of me. My mind couldn't help but remember how I had first met them. They had all been on the floor of my mansion, unconscious and wounded. Now they were in front of me in the demon world. I know them. I stared at the one I was meant to marry, seeing him slowly shake his head and rise from the ground. They came to rescue me. He came to rescue me. My heart became overjoyed and full of warmth and happiness. I was going to go home. The question was, how? As the sight of the boys kept the demon's attention, a second tear opened above them, causing everyone to look up. Four women dropped down from the tear and somehow managed to fall into the arms of the incubi behind Matthew. Whoa! There's my girl. I gotcha! Ah! Whoa! Are you okay? Eric! Love! I've got you! James! <laughs> Whoa! Are you alright? You two are so cute. I stared wide-eyed. Their wives came too? I watched as the boys and the girls finally planted themselves on the ground before looking around. 
However, Matthew instantly bolted for me, causing Diana to jump away in surprise. Ah, you went for me instead of for Diana's jugular? That's so nice. Whoa! Ah! Matthew wrapped his arms around me, and I instinctively tensed up from being charged at before taking in his scent in physical form. He was here. I wasn't dreaming. He really came for me, and he was here holding me. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine. I almost couldn't believe it, but I wrapped my arms around Matthew's torso, pulling him tighter to me as I took in one more whiff of his scent. However, before I could melt into his arms in relief at his presence, he was forcefully dragged backwards. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Ah! No, no PDAs, thank you. Whoa! Huh? I watched as the fairy figure gripped Matthew's hoodie and roughly pulled him away from me with an angered face. Wait, hold on! Matthew! Before anyone could react, Matthew spun around and swiped at the fairy. They squeaked and released him, floating higher into the air. Hands off! You hands off! I quickly rushed over and held Matthew's hand, wanting to bring his attention away from the fairy and back to me. <laughs> Matthew! Smooch. Quick. I reached up and grabbed Matthew's face, pulling him to me and kissed him. His eyes stared in shock before he melted against my lips and held my head in his hands, kissing me deeper. I closed my eyes in sync with his as I lowered my hands and wrapped them around his shoulders. I was beyond happy to see him again. At that moment, I didn't even care how he had found me. I was just happy that he was there with me again. Unfortunately, Matthew and I couldn't stay close for long. The fairy shouting caused us to pull apart to look at them. He has the same aura as the Demon Lord! Really? This is the only boy out of the four so far that you've reacted negatively to? Well, that's interesting. Rubbing her head and glaring at the fairy, Diana stepped up, crossing her arms and rubbing her temple. Well, he is the son of the Demon Lord. There you go. That's not what I meant! I'm, I'm saying... Ugh! What? Come on, let's get you home. Matthew gently took my hand and tugged me towards his brothers. However, this time Diana stepped in front of Matthew. I'm afraid she can't leave. And why not? She's been cursed. She can't leave this plane without dying. But if you wish to kill your bride to bring her back to the demon world, then be my guest. Such sass. Matthew glared at Diana and stepped in front of me protectively. Why should I believe you? It's true, Matthew. The demon lord cursed me, so I can't leave. I placed my hand on Matthew's shoulder, causing him to turn his head and look at me in surprise. His expression morphed from anger to sudden fear. What? You can't be serious. We no. are, but don't worry. We plan to kill the one who cursed her soon enough. When? One week's time. One week? What? Can we go back to the aura thing, please? No? Where is this number coming from, Succubus? Oh boy. Alright, well... Let's bring you guys all up to speed, I guess. Uh, and of course I say the trap. Oh. Actually, I do. You all don't belong on the battlefield. What are you talking about? I gotta let Twyla have her line. I will not take untrained and unarmed beings into a war zone. We can fight too. <laughs> Diana squinted at me. We understand completely. We do as well. Alright. Alright, and then I get my new outfit. Oh wow! That looks really good on you. Thanks, Dessa. I blush, getting used to the feel of the outfit. The corset wasn't tight, but it was still something new along with the rest of the garb. Matthew, however, smiled down at me and kissed over my forehead. You look really cute. Aw, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Faye, Rabbit, you both should finish your preparations and head over to the Demon Lord's castle for the spell. How are you going to get there? Oh, get us there, no problem. <laughs> Just make sure we don't get stuck there, or lost. No promises! Sarah, make sure the job is done. I shall, my lady. Sarah, Faye, and Rabbit began to make their way out of the room as Diana turned to me and my group. 
As they left, Diana let out a small sigh. I will take you to some rooms you may rest in. Thank you, Diana. Diana merely nodded and led our group out of the room towards our new temporary rooms. This entire experience was not something I expected to go through, especially since it was now interfering with my wedding. I was trapped in the demon world under a curse I couldn't break without the demon lord being killed, and I was expected to wait. The entire journey to my room became one filled with mild anger within me. At least Matthew was here to help me through this, but I still couldn't help but let the situation sink underneath my skin. This wasn't fair at all. I knew Matthew could sense my anger as he lightly squeezed my hand, which was gently cupped in his as he walked beside me. Hey, what's wrong? I'll tell him your frustration. <sighs> I looked to him, letting it go. It's just unfair, you know? This whole thing has become a large, complicated mess, and I... I gritted my teeth and squeezed Matthew's hand back. I didn't want to complain, as things were going to be fixed soon, but it was still infuriating to think that I couldn't do anything immediately. Matthew slowly released my hand and wrapped it around my shoulders. Hey, don't worry about it, alright? Think about it as a vacation or something. No. A vacation? Matthew grinned and nodded, hugging me slightly to his side. Yeah, a vacation to, uh... See new sights? Um. <laughs> I couldn't help the amused smile on my face as Matthew tried to make me feel better. It was another reason why I adored him. He did his very best to make sure that I was happy. Despite the crappy situation we were in, I was thankful for that. I wrapped my arm around him and nodded. Thanks, Matthew. Matthew smiled and nodded before kissing my cheek. You're welcome. Anything for you. Aw, oh, Matthew, I love you so much. Matthew and I continued to walk down the halls of the castle until we arrived at the same ambassador room I had slept in before. I guess that the room was mine for now. Stepping in, Matthew looked around in slight awe. Whoa! Plus some digs. What kind of room did you have in uh, the Demon Lord's castle? <laughs> I had to giggle at Matthew's surprise. It was almost like we had stepped into a hotel on a vacation. Except this one was forced on us until the end of a civil war. It was mildly messed up, but it was a situation we had to deal with. I walked over to the bed and sat down, letting out a sigh at feeling the softness underneath me. The bed was still as comfy as last night. Matthew, however, began to walk around the room, taking in the sight of the decor. This is a really fancy room. I wonder what room the others got. I smiled, watching Matthew ponder for a moment before replying to his statement. Yeah, apparently this is the open ambassador's room. I was able to sleep here when I arrived. Matthew stared at me dumbfounded for a moment before slapping his forehead and shaking his head. Right, right. Time's different here. Holy crap. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's so cute. He's like, what do you mean you like slept a night here? I've only been a few hours. Wait, huh? I became confused as to what Matthew meant. What did he mean about time being different here? Matthew looked up at me and grinned sheepishly. Well, uh, how do I explain this without making it confusing? <laughs> uh... Matthew rubbed the back of his head, staring at the fireplace before speaking. Well, you see, time moves faster here compared to the human world. Like, much faster. If I remember right, then I think the time difference is... Every five hours here is one hour there? Maybe? Wait, wait, huh? So, if I was here for a day, then... Matthew took a moment to do the math before nodding and speaking again. Yeah, that's right. You were gone from the human world for about five hours. Five hours?! I was astonished. The time difference was really prominent and a little disorientating. Disorientating. Disorientate? Disorienting. I don't think disorient. Disor <laughs> disorientating is... I don't think that's how you spell it. I think it's disorienting. Unless I'm just, like, not understanding that word. Uh, now I'm confused. Didn't that mean time moved faster here? I was getting confused, holding my head to try and unscramble my thoughts as the collided. Matthew, however, rushed over to me and sat down next to me, hip to hip. Hey, 
don't worry about it, okay? We found you, so that's all that matters. I could only nod before looking at the ground. It was a lot to take in, but at least I wasn't really missing for a day in the human world. However, I was going to be here for a week, so in accordance to the time difference, I would be missing for more than a day. How was everyone at home going to react? I could only hope that something was used as a cover to delay the wedding or the like. I looked up to Matthew, now a bit concerned. Huh? What is it? What happened while I was missing? Matthew frowned a bit and rubbed his head, running his hands through his fluffy hair as he spoke, staring at his knees. Well, when you didn't come with the rings, we got kind of worried and tried to call you. When you didn't pick up, we kind of panicked, but Irene and Iridessa decided to rush over to the house to see what had happened. They came back, saying you were gone! We pretty much scrambled to use our magic to wipe everyone's memories, reschedule everything, and use the time to find out what happened. Matthew pressed his lips together, most likely remembering what he felt during my absence. I felt bad, but there was nothing I could have done to stop it. Matthew shook his head and continued. I guess we have to thank Simon for finding you. Without him, we wouldn't have figured out what happened. Hey, thanks, Simon. Simon? Matthew nodded before stuffing his hand in his pocket and pulling out the infuriating stuffed animal. Simon blinked a couple of times before looking up at me and giggling like he usually did. <laughs> Simon! Simon jumped from Matthew's hands into my arms and crawled up onto my shoulder, becoming immobile like a doll once he settled between my neck and shoulder. He gave his head a little pat before looking back to Matthew. Well, he was the one that hid the rings. I had to find him. I know, but after you were taken, he helped us pinpoint where you were, and bam, here we are. Thank you, Simon. Matthew chuckled a bit as he ruffled some of Simon's fur. <laughs> I guess this little furball was useful after all. I could only smile before leaning over to kiss Matthew's cheek, making him gasp slightly. Huh? <laughs> At least you found me. Soon we'll be able to go home and get married like we planned. It gave me a little hope to let the thoughts sink in. Despite the terrible situation we were in, we would soon be able to go home. I was positive we would win this war and everything would work out just fine in the end. Matthew seemed to agree, nodding as well with a smile. Yeah, we'll go home soon. Matthew wrapped his arms around me and nuzzled the side of my head, making me softly giggle. My body felt relieved to have him near me, causing me to wrap my own arms around him. My heart was jumping with joy, regardless of the situation we were in. Simon took to the cue to hop off my shoulder and quickly skittered across the floor and up the fireplace mantel, resting on it with the decor that sat upon it. Matthew, however, soon released me and fell back onto the bed, feeling its softness. <laughs> Man, it's been so long since I felt a demon bed. Huh. What's the difference from a regular bed? Matthew grinned up at me and crossed his hands behind his head, lounging back on the mattress. Well, demons don't sleep in this world, so we get very comfy beds just so we can lay back and relax on. That's a good point. I never thought about the fact that demons don't sleep, so why do they have beds? Wait, demons don't sleep? Nah, we're too paranoid that people will kill us in our sleep. <laughs> then how the heck do you function? Energy and food. As long as we have both, we can pretty much be awake 24-7. The way that Matthew seemed relaxed about the whole thing made it seem like... Made it seem liked being here. Maybe it's like made it seem he, like he liked being here. A part of me was curious on whether or not he liked being in this world more than the human world, but I had to remember, he went to the human world of his own accord. Besides, he was ready to marry me and live his entire life in my world. Matthew stretched and let out a groan before relaxing back on the bed sheets, letting out a small yawn. Oh, I'm tired. You want to hit the hay? I nodded, feeling exhaustion run over me, causing me to lie back and cuddle up to Matthew, nestling into his shoulder. He chuckled before wrapping an arm around me. I love you so much. I promise we'll get home soon. I smiled, kissing his cheek before closing my eyes and drifting to sleep. Tomorrow is going to be a long day. That is so nice. We actually did get like another thing with one of the other guys where it was just like, let's talk about things. Like what, how, what happened while I was away? Talked a bit about... You know, time difference and 
what the beds are made of and how they found her. I thought it was really nice. And then you guys went to sleep. It dropped her a little bit of snuggling and kisses on the cheek. Very, very nice. I liked that. However, as I opened my eyes, I found myself not looking at Matthew or in my bed, but I felt cold ground beneath me and something tightly wrapped around my neck. Gosh, this again? What the... Oh, the jail cell again. I looked down, seeing my skin dusty and dirty, which only added more confusion. What was happening to me? I reached up and gasped once more as I felt a familiar collar around my neck, a chain dangling from the front and running behind me. I instinctively grabbed the collar, trying to pull it from my neck, but as I did, something yanked the chain connected to it and caused me to fall back, knocking the wind out of me. Ah! I turned my head to the chain pull to see a familiar imp demon glaring down at me and gripping onto my chain. It was the same imp demon from the vision Matthew showed me when Diana came around, but how could this be? I quickly grabbed the chain and tried to yank it from his hands, wanting to be free, but found no strength to actually pull it out of the imp's grasp. The imp merely cackled and pulled the chain again, making me fall forward onto my stomach. Gah! I froze. This was another dream, and I could tell that Matthew was going to be the villain once again. My mind began to panic as I scrambled up to my hands and knees, looking around at the predicament I was in. I was in a large steel cage. My chain hung out between the bars in the hands of an imp guarding my cell. I had no neighbors, nor did I hear anyone else in the space with me. This was definitely a dream, and I needed to wake up before Matthew came around. Who knew what he would do with me? This was a dream, after all. I looked around the room, slowing my breath and trying to think logically. What could I do? The first thing was to do something about the chain around my neck. Then I could try and break the door down somehow and be free. Seemed like a good idea. I quickly grabbed the chain again and swiveled on the ground to be on my bottom, locking my feet against the door and pulling the chain back. I managed to get some purchase, and luckily the imp couldn't manage to pull me forward from my struggle. Nope. So much for that idea. A large bolt of red lightning suddenly traveled down the chain and shocked the collar around my neck, causing me to release a soundless scream. My body became electrocuted in red light and energy, sending waves of pain through every part of me. As he finally stopped, I let out a gasp and fell back onto the ground, shaking from the aftermath. My body felt entirely jittery, and licks of pain brushed over my nerves from the shock. What the hell? I could barely look over at the imp from the pain I was feeling, seeing him smirk at what he had done. However, as soon as I saw the grin of hair on its ugly lips, a foot jammed into the side of the imp's head, causing it to buckle over. H huh You fucking pig fawn! What did you do? Now he's back as a demon again. My eyes glanced over to see Matthew in his demon form, glaring daggers at the fallen imp with his foot jammed into his cheek. As he looked at me, still angered with a snarl across his expression, I gasped, seeing the familiar cold go gold color over his eyes. The evil Matthew had returned. I was just going to say, oh, he doesn't have the gold color. I guess that was forgotten to be added in. Whoops. Gingerly, Matthew took up my chain and pulled me to the door, leaning in and keeping the chain beneath his head so he could bring my head as close to him as he could without me being pulled against the bars on the door. Staring into his eyes, I was surprised to feel calm and almost hopeful that maybe this was a different Matthew, one who wasn't cruel and full of ill intent. Then again, he kept me in the cell and didn't release me, so that was a sign that I was wrong. Despite this, he spoke calmly and almost comfortingly. Did he hurt you? Of course, I nodded. Whatever electrocution the imp had done made me feel like I was dying for a split moment. Matthew, in response to my reply, glared at the imp with a deadly pair of eyes, causing the victim in question to sleek back against the wall. I order you not to hurt her. If she's hurt, then she can't give me proper energy, and I won't be able to rule this world properly. Do you know how much of a problem that would be? The imp opened his mouth to protest, but as soon as he did, Matthew formed a knife in the air and chucked it into his open mouth. Oh yeah, I forgot that he does that. A splash of blood erupting from behind the imp's head as the knife embedded itself into the back of his throat. With a garbled whimper, the imp slowly collapsed to the ground, dying at last. I, however, could only watch horrified with my hands over my mouth. What was going on? Matthew turned back to me and pulled my chain slightly, causing me to look back at him with fearful eyes. There. Now he won't hurt you anymore. Why? Why are you doing this? Let me go. 
Matthew's face slowly shifted to a cold, sadistic glare. I would. But how will I know that you won't run away from me? I began to panic. I wanted to be free. I wanted to run, but Matthew here wasn't going to let me go, and I didn't want to stay in the cell any longer. Despite every fiber in my body wanting me to awaken, I couldn't. <laughs> make me your queen! I promise I won't run! He's not gonna make me his queen. I had to plead with him. If I was so important to him, then he cared enough about me to listen. Matthew, however, chuckled. Promises don't mean anything here. The last promise made to me was that Pig Fawn's word that he wouldn't hurt you. And well, you saw how that turned out. But, but Matthew, I- Do not call me that! His voice rang in my ears, violently pounding against my eardrums and causing me to wince violently. I cupped my hands over my ear, shutting my eyes from the pain, before feeling Matthew draw back, sliding his hand to the end of my chain. I'm not in the mood to take your energy now. I'll come back another time. With a flash of blue energy, the chain in his hand vanished and reappeared above me, giving me enough slack to let me lie down, but only if I was directly underneath it. I grimaced and pulled at the chain, wanting to still be free from it, but only heard the chuckle of Matthew's cruel sadism as he turned and began to walk away. You better be prepared when I get back. I've got a world to rule, after all. Can't spend all my time making sure you're ready. <laughs> Zoom! A violent quake ran through my body and I began to struggle harder, making him laugh as he left the hall out of my sight. Let me go! Let me go! I shut my eyes tightly, pulling and tugging as much as I could. Despite it being to no avail, I screamed once again, this time breaking the illusion around me and waking up at last. When in doubt, scream for hours. Let me go! I sat up, screaming through the air as my hands clasped themselves around my neck. My scream reverberated throughout the room, barely letting me notice Matthew falling out of bed beside me. <laughs> Poor Matthew, he's having a harder time than Eric, almost. Oh! Sorry. I quickly looked over at the sound of a hard thump on the ground, seeing Matthew's curly head peek out from over the side of the bed. His hand ran over his hair as a pained groan escaped his lips. Oh. Oh my god! Ignoring what had just happened to me, I scrambled across the bed and slid off of the bed to kneel beside Matthew. Luckily, he wasn't badly hurt, but he rubbed his head obviously disoriented from falling out of bed. Poor boy, he's fallen like three times today. To add more insult to the injury, Simon had crawled down from the mantle and began to poke at Matthew with his mini knife. Thankfully, the knife wasn't actually sharp, so all I did was prod and poke at Matthew's skin without drawing blood. Gosh darn it, Simon. God, Simon! Simon, knock it off! Not the time or the place. Matthew flailed his arm, almost knocking Simon away with his hand. Taking the hand, Simon jumped onto the bed and began to hop around on top of it as his own distraction while I looked to Matthew. I'm so, so sorry. Are you okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Y yeah, I'm fine. Oh. Matthew grimaced, stretching his back and neck before shaking his head and looking up at me, slightly bleary-eyed from sleep. Are you okay? Or did you have another nightmare? I looked down at the ground between us, remembering the nightmare I was trapped in. I could only nod, pressing my lips together, causing Matthew to frown. I'm sorry. Do you want a hug? Please. Despite the nightmare, I still loved Matthew and needed him with me. I knew the dreams I was having weren't real, and even if they were trying to warn me of something, Matthew was still the man I was going to be married to. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it still angels, or is it something else? Is it his mom? Maybe his mom's not happy. The man I was going to be married to. Matthew smiled softly before swiveling onto his knees and hugging me to his body, laying my head on his shoulder. I wrapped my arms around him and closed my eyes, taking in his reassuring scent. As a set of knocks appeared at our door, however, Matthew and I shot our heads in the direction of the sound. Oi! Time to wake up! We got grub! Man, what timing? Ugh, can you not call it that? <laughs> Matthew and I looked at each other before scrambling up onto the bed, forgetting that Simon was on it. I slid across the bed and sat down, trying to make it seem like I had just woken up, as Matthew tried to crawl over but wound up making Simon release a heavy squeak. Ah! Once again, Matthew fell off of the bed and landed on the floor, releasing another shout of pain. Is everything alright in there? 
Oh, you know, just a couple of Klingons in here. Don't worry about it. We're fine. We're fine. Simon, cackling at Matthew's mistake, scrambled up back onto the fireplace mantle and became a doll once more as I cleared my throat. <clears throat> Come in! As the door opened, Matthew threw himself onto the mattress, placing his head on his hand like he had completely planned to kneel beside the bed as his brothers and their wives entered with plates of food in their hands. Good hustle, good hustle. Damien and Twyla, the ones who were carrying extra plates of food, stopped and stared at us with raised eyebrows. Damien, of course, looked over at the mantle at Simon before smiling and shaking his head, passing his extra plate to Matthew. Thanks, bro. You're welcome, Matthew. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Twyla placed her extra plate in my hands and smiled before walking over to an empty space with Damien and eating. On the plates were sliced fruits, bread, cheese, and some sort of jerky. James and Sam, however, were the only ones who didn't start indulging in what was on the menu. So, we have less than a week to prepare for the Demon Lord. You know, fuck me. But I'm excited as shit to finally get a kick his ass into the ground. Huh. <sighs> That's because you got dra that dragon blood, though. The other brothers seemed to agree, even Matthew. However, I was stuck on the nightmare I had the night before. I unconsciously rubbed my neck, remembering the feel of the collar around my neck. Doing so caught Iridesa's attention. Hey, what's wrong? Did you hurt your neck? I instantly looked up and stared, seeing everyone now look at me in curiosity. I shook my head violently, not wanting anything to know. Anything. Anything or anybody to know what had happened. I'm fine. I'm fine. The wives seemed unconvinced, but they nodded anyway. The boys, however, were focused on the battle ahead of us. So, do we plan on training like we usually do? That seems to be the best plan. It's been a long time since we've actually fought in a battle. Have you fought in one before? The boys, despite the shame in their eyes, nodded slowly in unison. Part of us living in our father's castle involved receiving the occasional unexpected visitor. Holy crap, man. I remember one time there was this group that just stormed in and tried to take on the old man, but he sent James to take care of him. I'd never seen James so pissed off before. <clears throat> That's because they threatened to burn the castle down if I didn't surrender. Obviously, that was out of the question. <laughs> well, Sam, what about you when you got into those fights with the army generals? They weren't too happy about you being so testy with them. They got cocky and thought they could push me around. Fuck them in good riddance. The more I listened, the more the battle stories seemed more about James, Eric, and Sam. <laughs> Damien obviously stayed out of fighting, but what about Matthew? I looked to Matthew, seeing him simply eat his food, staring down at his plate. Did he have nothing to add to the conversation? Curiosity. What about you, Matthew? Matthew looked up at me in surprise, a piece of jerky wedged between his teeth and lips. Huh? <laughs> Bad time. I fought back giggling at the sight, but as everyone turned over and looked at Matthew, I relaxed a bit and waited. I was curious to see if Matthew had any stories of his own to tell. To my surprise, Matthew swallowed the jerky in his mouth and shook his head. No, I wasn't the fighting type. Never have been, really. Sam's face tells another story. My mind flashed back to him fighting Malix, and how he managed to not only duck and dodge Malix's gun, but also make Swiss cheese out of the devil in question. Why would Matthew lie? Sam scoffed and spit into the fireplace, making us all look over at him. That's gross, dude. What a crock of bullshit, Pipsqueak. <laughs> Damn, called out. Bullshit? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Don't fucking play dumb with me. I remember you massacring an entire gang of Vince because they looked at your mom funny. <laughs> I was the one who had to clean that shit up. Oh no. I suddenly went wide-eyed at Matthew, who in turn stared right at me with a fearful frown on his face. He got into fights here? I guess it was expected of a demon to at least get into one fight in their life, but Matthew and Massacre? No, no, it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't me. Like hell it wasn't. Dude, shut up! <laughs> Poor Matthew. Make me! Oh. I will! So what was that about not fighting again? Sam and Matthew jumped out of their seats and marched at each other, slamming their foreheads together and snarling, fire burning in each of their eyes. 
I quickly rushed up and pulled at Matthew's arm, trying to bring him back to the bed. Matthew, calm down. Sam, knock it off. There's my girl, Carrie. Despite Carrie also pulling Sam's arm, neither of us could pull our incubus away from the other as they battled each other with their eyes. Staring contest. The air in the room became full of tense energy until suddenly both of the boys were swatted over the head. James? Fuck! Ow! Huh. Both of you, that's enough! That's my boy. I looked up to see James holding his fist that he used to sock his brothers with, a glare painted all over his face. Ah, the duties of an older brother. Matthew and Sam looked up at their eldest brother, both irritated at being hit, but silent enough to know not to talk back. A moment passed before Sam stood up straight and shook his head, finally allowing Carrie to pull him back to a spot where they could sit down. Whatever. Matthew, on the other hand, straightened up and continued to glare at James, almost in defiance. Something sparked in his eyes, something that made me worry, so I pulled his arm back, trying to catch his attention. Hey, come on. Matthew finally looked at me, slowly receding back to his normal gaze, before nodding and rubbing his head over the newly forming bruise while sitting down beside me. Well, this is an interesting family reunion. Diana's voice suddenly made all of us turn to the door to see her and Sarah in the doorway, with Diana leaning against the archway. As she pushed off and stepped in, Sarah followed and closed the door. Can we help you? Possibly, if you all want to survive this war and go home. Especially you, my dear. Diana looked over to me and crossed her arms under her bosom. What did she mean? She meant that you could skip. And you could say, I'd like to train with Saro. Saro seemed skilled enough to train me. He was Diana's right hand, after all, and he was the one who apparently stopped the Demon Lord from getting his hands on me. I at least had to give it a shot. Saro nodded and looked at Diana, who crossed her arms. Very well. You've made a good choice, I assure you. And he probably won't hold back with me, I assume. With that, Diana turned on her heel and left the room. Finish eating. Afterwards, you should start training. Everyone in the room nodded their affirmation as Diana and Saro left. Well, it looks like we'll be busy for the next couple of days. <laughs> This'll be fun. Man. Training's gonna suck. It'll be worth it, though. Damien's right. As we all finished eating, everyone left to either train or do things on their own. I left to start my own work, determined to be prepared for what was to come. The Demon Lord wasn't going to win. I wouldn't let him. 